you were wanting an update on the Enigma machine, I'm afraid I have to disappoint because I haven't really done anything for a while. Um, the only thing I really have done is accidentally break the entry wheel, which is why I'm printing another one at the moment. And I'm going to change over the keys on the keyboard. So I found with the the first keys I did, some of the paint is starting to come off underneath the the letters of the keys. Um, it's probably a bit hard to see, but it's sort of rubbing off on some of the letters. So I have reprinted uh, the base of the keys and I'm just going to make the keys without the little glass windows because I found I didn't need them uh, just using this overhead transparency material to do the lettering so that's the next thing I need to do I still of course need to finish all the wiring so uh, the reason that I haven't got very far is because I've been distracted with another project so I'll have a look at that one now so this is what I've been working on instead of working on the Enigma. Um, I usually have multiple projects on the go. Some of them take me years, well, like that bus sign thing there. I've been working on that one for years. But uh, I sort of work on things and then either I have a setback or I get bored of working on the same thing and I want to do something else. So this is one of those something else projects. And it really came about because... Uh, I found these these metal bowls uh, in a shop when I was looking for something else and one of the things I've always wanted to build is a Van de Graaff generator. Now I did start building one when I was a, a teenager I believe but I don't think I ever got it working. So what I've done now is build this one and it's actually working quite well. So um, this is the speed controller for it. If we turn it on Whoops. Uh, the sphere is 12 inches in diameter and currently the small electrode is uh, over 12 inches away so the, the, the arc is jumping greater than the diameter of the sphere. Uh, if we turn the lights off you might be able to see it. So the uh, the small electrode, I've actually got a larger sphere on the way from China. Um, what's on there now is just a, a like a cupboard handle, a, a small round ball. Um, I think it'll work better with the bigger one. But um, as you can see, the machine works pretty well. So I'm getting some quite good arcs from it. Um, if I move this a little bit closer, it doesn't take it as long to charge up, so you get you get uh, more frequent arcing. Um, I don't know how close I can get without zapping the camera. Now, of course, if you get really close, it's probably about an inch away or so there. Um, and also, if you're brave enough, you can you can get arcs to your hand. It tingles a bit. It, it doesn't actually hurt too badly. Um, if I pull back and let it charge up a bit, you get a bigger arc and you get more of a shock. But um, yeah, it works pretty well. So what I'll do is I'll uh, stop electrocuting myself and we'll have a look inside it. Um, one thing to note is if I have the 
the small electrode too far away, the, the sphere starts losing too much charge before it can build up enough to actually arc across. Uh, I think the furthest I've got this to jump is about 400 millimeters. So you can see I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the, the tape measure there, but um, you can see the distance there is uh, about 380 millimeters, and it'll arc across that distance quite well. So uh, one of the things I've actually had to do to get this to work pretty well is I've got it in quite a small room. Um, you can see the doors shut. And I've had my dehumidifier on. So at the moment, uh, the humidity is, what's that? About 48%. Um, when I started, it was 62%. So making the air drier helps a lot. Um, let's have a look at the insides of it. So this is inside the top of the machine. Um, the domes are just metal bowls that I got and originally they were flat on the bottom so what I actually did is I heated them up red hot and then just hammered them round uh, to get the, the spherical shape. Now the most of the support for the machine is made out of this white plastic chopping board and um, the rings and things of that were, were cut on uh, using my router. Now, if we look at the roller here, this is the top roller. So I've got the machine set up so that it's negatively charged on the top. And the belt I'm using is a latex belt. It's one of those uh, exercise belts for yoga. I think they use them for. And uh, the rollers are made out of PVC. But uh, what I've actually done is, because the PVC pipe is straight, straight-sided, parallel, um, I 3D printed little sleeves that actually slide onto it. And I think this is, this is one of the first ones I did. Um, these sleeves fit over the PVC pipe, and this gives me the crown. And the crown is important because that's what helps keep the belt centered. So... If you've got a, a pulley like this uh, and you want to keep the belt centered, you, you need a pulley with some crown to it. And this was my first attempt. I didn't know how much to put. Uh, that turns out to be too much. And what would happen is the belt would actually ride up and then flip over and um, fold up double. So I, this is the beauty of course of 3D printing. I was able to print up another version. Um, this one is covered in tape because I was trying tape as one of the materials for the top roller. So this thing's very tall, so I need to stand on a little stool to be able to get up to it. Um, up here, if I don't block the light, is the, the upper brush, and I'm just using a little piece of metal mesh. Um, I think that was from a... Uh, I think it's called a splatter guard from the $2 shop. So that was very cheap. And uh, everything runs on bearings. These are the, the cheapest skateboard bearings I could get. Uh, I think they're ABEC 1 spec, so they're not great. Um, but they were less than a dollar each. So the other thing uh, that I've got is this whole thing is, is mounted on this ring. So this upper roller is mounted on this ring with these, these three adjusting screws. Now these actually go down to another ring, which is what's holding this onto the PVC pipe. Um, if I pull this down, it's a bit hard. Everything's friction fit. So if you bear with me for a second, I'll see if I can, can move this. Ah, no, it's a bit too tight. Um, if this ring, if I could move this ring down, you would be able to see that there's another ring inside there which this is sitting up against. And this is how I join the two halves of the bowl together. Um, I just leave a little lip and the top bowl just fits on top of it. 
So this ring was cut to be perfectly the diameter of the, the lip of the bowl. And to make the electrical connection, I've just got a, a strip of copper here that makes a connection between the, the two hemispheres. So um, one of the advantages of Oh, we've lost the focus. Stupid camera. One of the advantages of mounting it on these three rings, uh, these three threads, sorry, is by adjusting these, you can change the angle of this top roller. And that's important to make sure the belt tracks truly. So by adjusting these screws, I can change the angle of the belt to make sure it runs centrally. Um, what I'll do is I'll remove the rings and we'll have a look at the, the details underneath and in the bottom. So if we look at the top of this now with the, with the hemisphere removed, you can see how there's just a, a simple ring and then these three screws that um, join the, the lower ring to the upper ring and the ring holding the roller. So this is just basically sitting on top of there. Uh, it's, it's just a, a friction fit. And the hole in this big disc is smaller than the tube, so it can't go any further down. So the other reason I did this is because the belts I'm using at the moment are quite stretchy. But I may want to experiment with other belts, in which case I need to adjust the tension on the belt. And by having this upper platform movable, by adjusting these, these nuts, I can tension the belt up. Uh, the other thing you can see, maybe, is... Well, it's going to be a bit tricky to see is the I actually made like a, a reverse hemisphere on the bowl so perhaps we can see it from underneath but what I did is I drilled a hole in the bottom of these bowls and then did the same trick where I heated it up red hot um, using my oxyacetylene torch and then I um, curled the edge of the hole inwards I actually used a wooden uh, bowls ball for that because it was about the right diameter. Um, basically I heated it up, stuck the bowl in it and then whacked it with a hammer. And that let me turn the edge in. And what that means is there's no sharp edges on the outside of the machine. Um, this lip is turned over and when the two hemispheres join together it's quite a smooth seam. And that's important so you don't get any leakage um, off the electrostatic charge. So you can see how this just basically pushes up and gets held in place by this lower ring. Uh, the bottom hemisphere is basically exactly the same. So it's got this curved off piece. And if we look down here, you can see this is the lower brush and the lower roller is actually a tight fit on the shaft and the bearings are inside these these little holders and what I've got is a an electric motor and that's turning a pulley on the on the lower um, roller and I'm just using an o-ring as a drive belt uh, the ratio is two to one so that motor um, just has enough torque to turn it quite well. And the other thing you can see is how this, this PVC pipe just basically slides through another ring and sits into the bottom. So it's all very simple. Uh, it's it's quite, quite a nice, easy sort of construction. Um, the brushes are adjustable. So you can just loosen these screws and slide the brushes in and out. You want them to be as close as possible to the belt without touching it. And you may have heard before, when I was running the machine, it was making a, a little ticking noise. And that's actually because the, the belt I'm using uh, wasn't, wasn't a continuous loop. Uh, it was actually a strip and I've had to join it together. And I had all sorts of problems trying to get something to glue it. And in the end, no glue I had would work, so what I, what I used was double-sided tape. And that's worked, that's held the two bits together. But you can see that the belt is sort of bunching up here. And what's happening is these, these little ribs on it, where, where the tape's bunched, is actually hit, hitting the brushes. And that's what's causing that little ticking noise. 
and that will be leaking off some of my charge I believe. So I have ordered a continuous belt and I'm hoping when that arrives that'll fix that problem and I may be able to get bigger sparks out of it but I, I think I'm hitting the limit of what I can do with hemispheres this size and with the sort of leakage I'm getting. So that's pretty much how the machine's put together. Um, I'll put it all back together and we'll, we'll see if it still runs. Uh, of course I've put details on my website about all of this. Uh, the other thing I've got here is a, a little speed controller just to control the motor and what I'm going to do is build a, a little control box and that'll live underneath here. So the base of the machine is just, just wood, it's a piece of recycled oak I had and it's sitting up on these big rubber blocks, big rubber feet. Um, one thing I've noticed is that the, the power supply I'm using uh, isn't actually earthed. So it's got an earth connection coming in, but there's no connection between the, the negative on the motor and the earth on the power supply. And I suspect I'd probably want this all to be at ground potential. And I need to experiment a bit because the machine's working very well without it. Um, so it may not be necessary and it may not make any difference. I did, I did try a few quick tests where I used a clip lead to clip to the bottom hemisphere which connects to the bottom brush by, via this, this copper strip and connecting that to a, an electrical earth ground but it didn't seem to make any difference so that may not be necessary. So you can see with the machine back together it's, it's working again uh, and you can hear the ticking off the belt hitting that upper cone. Um, so I'm hoping the machine will perform better when I fix that. So the, um, the charge that comes off it is quite incredible. So if I get anywhere near it, um, I, can, I can feel the, the hairs on my hand um, starting to stand up. And you can feel the the wind coming off the machine which is which is basically the flow of electrons so you can hear it crackling and popping um, if I get if I get close enough of course I get zapped so yeah you can see that's a that was quite a big big arc there so into your knuckles usually works quite well it doesn't hurt quite as much but um, yeah it's, it's quite a fun little machine and I'm, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out and how it works um, it looks very clean and it works very well so Van de Graaff machines aren't actually that difficult to build and get working if you if you have a look online you can find all sorts of examples literally made out of tin cans and rubber bands and they all produce arcs so it's a very fun, very cool little project and um, I'm pleased with how it's turned out. So back onto the Enigma machine now I guess.